self-love, right? So I've been seeing a lot of accounts on social media with females posting pictures of their body under the tag and title of self-love, right? Showing intimate parts of themselves and in intimate situations and promoting self-love. So at first human glance, my uh, judgment on it was, oh, these are just females looking for any excuse to take the clothes off and to be hoish. But then I had to take a step back as usual and realize that everything is symbolic. There's no need to take anything personally because nothing is personal. Everything is symbolic and it speaks to the spirit. So looking at this thing deeper, I come to see what's being communicated here. These people are feeling a certain high level of confidence, right? And it's almost like the final step to really reach that level of confidence is to put yourself out there in front of the whole world, right? Now, I'm not condoning anything or saying anything is bad or anything like that. I'm not making any judgments. This is just an observation on the symbolic reference. Imagine the level of confidence it takes to share pictures of yourself online. It's no clothes on. And to not give a fuck what anybody thinks. To not give a fuck what friends or family or anybody says. Good, bad, or indifferent. Talk about self-love, right? To love yourself to the level that no one else's judgments affect you. To be at the level where no one else's judgments affect how you feel about yourself. That's self-love for real. Now, as they say, the Akasha speaks to the Akasha, right? When someone makes a move out of love like that it speaks to a certain element within the observer if they're able to receive that message I think if we stop looking at things with such a judgmental take such a judgmental frame we can see the deeper message within these things the universe is communicating with us all the time so everybody lives in their own world in their own bubble it does connect when you are involved with other people, but ultimately you come into this world by yourself, you live it by yourself, and you die by yourself. You can share experiences. It's just like online, right? You're online, you're by yourself on your phone or on your computer, and yeah, you're connecting and communicating with other people, but you're still you. Unless you feel a very connected sense of self, right? Very connected with your spirit, with your soul, with your mind, with your body. You're not really going to be able to feel a deep connection with people far away and it be healthy, right? Sure, you can become dependent on online social relationships if you don't have any in real life, but balance is key in all things, especially in matters of the heart, right? And this ties into the chakras. You know, everyone talks about the chakras in the third eye, but... If, if the truth had to be told for real, for real, most people, a large majority, huge majority, maybe 80% of people do not get past the heart chakra, right? Most people are stuck in the first chakra, survival-based mindset. You know, most people are stuck in the sexual center. It's all about sex or creating things, right? Then you got the energetic center. Then you got the heart center. And that's probably the toughest place because that's where you really have to start letting go of negative mindsets and things that keep you dense and low. The heart chakra is where you have to forgive yourself and have self-love. You have to forgive yourself and accept yourself in all your flaws and all your mistakes. Wow, 777 over there. Nice. Self-love is where you have to forgive your parents. The heart chakra. You have to forgive everyone who's done anything wrong to you in the past, right? But everybody talks about third eye. It's levels, man, it's levels. And I don't make judgments, good or bad. I just observe and understand how it connects to my spirit and my development. Water. Ooh. Yeah, I take these walks to really uh, clear my mind, 
because I'm stuck in the house for most of the time doing a bunch of internet shit trying to keep up with these videos and whatnot but anyways I really get a chance to clear my head get some fresh air balance myself with the real world but uh yeah we were talking about self-love and the heart chakra and all that good stuff so the thing is sure anybody can be spiritual and magical and deal with gods and demons and all that good stuff but you're gonna be stuck you're gonna be stuck at your level of understanding if you don't learn to love and the main thing that needs to be loved is yourself if you don't love yourself you are at risk of harming yourself working with higher spiritual things because you really have to let go of emotionalism you got to let go of desire and you got to let go of fear all right it's not easy i haven't done that completely i'm still working on it everybody's working on it but ultimately that's what it boils down to placing judgments on good and bad placing judgment on desire and fear i love this i hate this those are the two things that generate karma according to buddhism and it's very true all problems in life stem from desire and fear desire and pain so the real work to do isn't memorizing a bunch of sigils or demon names or powers the real work to do is balancing yourself coming to terms with who you are getting past the heart chakra that's the real work and that's not exotic that's not sexy that's not fun and cool and mysterious and hip but that's the real work right you can play around in the third dimension and enjoy human stuff with some psychic ability and demonic ability involved or you can really put in the work that the gods are put here to do and cleanse your vibrations by loving yourself by letting go of those things that you're running away from those things that are hurting you those things that cause you to hate other people those things that cause you to judge other people <sighs> you don't need to have get back right just it is what it is it is what it is because the more you hold on to something it becomes a part of you it integrates with you and like I said it's difficult it's not easy it's difficult because we are creatures of habit we love to be stuck in our ways we love it because it's easy it's easy but growth is uncomfortable growth is uncomfortable achieving something greater than what you are is uncomfortable ask anybody who's done anything great in their life they're not going to tell you it's easy that's for damn sure right growing up nobody in my life told me that i can make money on the internet that i can make a living doing what i love that i can make a living producing art producing music making videos nobody told me that when i when i expressed a desire for that i was told that that would be a good hobby but you need to go to college you need to go to the military i've done both of those and i know what suffering looks like because i suffered all my life emotionally all right physically i had everything i needed but emotionally i did not i did not emotionally i lacked a personal feeling of love right i didn't feel loved so i tried those things that i was told to do military college didn't really <laughs> do anything but cause me more trouble right more debt more problems that i had to work off solving for years and for years that wasn't the way what is the way letting go of expectation finding out who you are know thyself understanding who you are and what you're put here to do and do that 
It's different for everybody. But you know what you're drawn to. You know what you're drawn to. And no matter what it is, we live in a certain day where you can make a comfortable living off of what you love to do. We've got the internet. You're connected to so many different people. You're connected to so many different warehouses in China. So you can even sell what you want to sell, right? If you see a brand of shoe and you like it, you can connect yourself with designers and have your own brand of shoe. Right? You can have your own clothing line. You can have your own... You can sell anything on Amazon. I keep saying that because it's true. And like I said, nobody in my life told me that I could do these things. But I had to step out of my comfort zone. And I had to research and I had to study and I had to learn. I had to take classes online. I had to pay for an education because nothing is free. You got to be uncomfortable. I had to spend money that I didn't have. Right? Back when I had to work my 9 to 5. I only had enough money to pay the bills, really, and have enough gas to get back to work the next day as I walked past my old job, haha. -ha. Um, yeah. Nobody was really given a perfect deck of cards to start this game with. But the thing is, you don't settle. And you don't stop there and let it end with what you were dealt with. You figure out what it is that you want. And you learn what you have to learn to go get it. Easier said than done. But every single day you have to put your foot forward and make a commitment to get better and to do better. To achieve what it is that you want. But in order to do that and to last, you have to have self-love. You have to understand that it's not going to be easy. It's going to be difficult. You're going to run into roadblocks. You're going to run into situations that are going to be hard to overcome, obstacles. But you've got to have enough self-love to not be hard on yourself. You've got to have self-love to believe in yourself and not give up. Because there's not always going to be people who believe in you. There's not always going to be people who support you and tell you that you're, going to be, that you're doing a great job. right? Sometimes you are your only support system. Right? It's really hard, but it can be done, and it has been done. Stand on your feet, maintain your frame, get it done. Don't accept excuses, but also don't be too hard on yourself because you're human and you're learning, and every day is a new opportunity to do more. Like I said, this isn't the exotic, super fun, sexy topic, right? Everybody wants to summon demons, which is cool. But understand, once once you figure that all out, right? Once you've evoked all 72 of the Goetia, worked with all 72 angels of the Shemham Mefirosh, went up and down the Kabbalah Tree of Life and the clip off, after you've done that, and you're done talking about it to make yourself sound cool, after you walk the gates of the Necronomicon, you're still here on planet Earth, right? You still got bills to pay. But in order to go further, you got to get past that heart chakra. You got to have compassion for yourself, right? In order to have compassion for other people, you got to understand that we're all in a human experience. And all these people that you think are your enemies are not your enemies. They're reflections of what's going on inside of you. <sighs> right? And when you heal the problems of others, you begin healing the problems of yourself. Sometimes, Okay, so I used to have deep revelations when I would meditate, or when I would read, or when I would evoke spirits. Now, I get the deepest revelations when I answer people's questions. People come to me with questions, and as I'm answering them, I'm like, wow, how did I even know that? Or where did that come from? You have to give back. And you have to give back out of love. Not out of trying to seek material gain, or influence, or any of that stuff. Love is the vibration. So... This is TK Trav, a.k.a. Travis Mages, here with LVX777. Peace.